Hey guys, I hope your week is going well. You know, I've been getting some questions from you guys if I can talk about Carmine. Ever since my video on makeup ingredients that could be breaking you out, wherein I mentioned that synthetic red dyes have been associated with Acne Cosmetica, you guys asked me to chat about the alternative dye Carmine. Carmine is a uh, natural, quote unquote, uh, dye that imparts a very vibrant scarlet color to things. And it is used not only in makeup and cosmetics, but also is added to food, candies, and it's also added to um, a lot of medications and dietary supplements. Uh, it's been used for centuries uh, to dye not only these things, but also clothing. I don't think I mentioned that. Carmine is derived from something called Dactylopius coccus, which is an insect, a very tiny insect that is part of the cochineal family and is a parasite of prickly pear cactus. And so the way Carmine is made is that these insects are collected and either boiled or baked or put out into the sun to kill and then kind of crushed up and either through alcohol or water a red dye is extracted. Uh, if you, you see the insect uh, they have a red coloration to them so it is that red dye that is being extracted. Obviously this is not going to be appealing or pleasing to many vegans um, and so many vegan, vegans seek to avoid this ingredient. So, um, you know, uh, it, is, it is a parasite of the prickly pear. Most uh, in, in manufacturing, the prickly pear has actually been uh, bred out artificially for the purposes of making carmine with these bugs in a more sustainable fashion. Uh, but you guys, I, this, this I did not know, I learned this in, in researching for this video, it takes about 70,000 to 100,000 bugs just to make one kilogram of carmine. Carmine is used in a ton of stuff, but cosmetics are probably going to be one of the biggest uh, driving forces for the carmine industry, carmine, um, use of carmine. Um, the final product, the final Carmine product can be pretty variable. Some, some uh, manufacturers will use alcohol to extract it, some will use water, and it actually can still contain some insect, com insect parts. The reason this is important is some people have really bad allergies to, really bad allergies to insects, and so they could be coming in contact with those same allergens through the Carmine dyes. Carmine is in a lot of blush, eyeshadow, lipstick, uh, and it's also in, it used to be present in the Starbucks strawberries and cream drink, but I learned that uh, there was a huge uh, backlash against that drink for containing that ingredient and Starbucks has since removed it. But it's also what is used to dye red Skittles and I believe maraschino cherries are also dyed with carmine. Also artificially flavored cherry yogurts like Yoplait yogurt I think contains carmine, different candies. Uh, believe it or not, they add it to ruby red grapefruit juice to make it look ruby red. Uh, and it's also added to imitation crab meat. So that is what gives it that red color. Um, and then the other place where it's gonna crop up a lot is in uh, the supplement industry and the vitamin industry and a lot of medications. And it's added really just for consumer appeal to make things look more vibrant so that you will buy them. So in other words, carmine as a red dye is something that they're adding to things that doesn't serve any purpose other than making things pretty and attractive, other than making it something that you want to take and consume. So it's solely for marketing. It has nothing to do with imparting any uh, health or health benefit. It doesn't add flavor to the food. It just makes it visually appealing. And in medications, it doesn't it doesn't do anything for the efficacy of the medication, and as you'll hear in a moment, it actually can cause harm. Uh, so, it turns out people can be pretty allergic to carmine. What kind of problems does carmine cause in skincare and personal care products? You can become sensitized to it and develop an allergy to it. It's not as common of a um, allergen in, in topicals as 
as fragrance, but it is something that you can develop what's called allergic contact dermatitis too. There are case reports of people who have been using makeup, uh, eyeshadows, blush, lipstick, and they develop horrible dermatitis and it's found to be the carmine. And while the reports of carmine allergic contact dermatitis are not super prevalent in the medical literature, it's likely that true incidence of allergic contact dermatitis to carmine is probably a lot higher because it's not something that is included in the standard testing battery for, for contact dermatitis. So in other words, when you uh, when your dermatologist thinks you have an allergic contact dermatitis, they do a test called patch testing and they put different allergens on your skin. And carmine is not included in that standard set. So it's something we may be missing and may be more prevalent than we are aware of. Um, so it, it is something that you can actually become allergic to, but is not as common. Where it's more of an issue though, are there are a lot of reports in the medical literature of a different type of allergy to carmine, um, anaphylaxis, people who are severely allergic to it. And rather than developing a rash uh, on their skin when they come in contact, these individuals undergo anaphylaxis either when they ingest it or when they inhale it. Anaphylaxis and severe allergic asthma can occur uh, to people, uh, in people who are allergic to it and who are exposed. Uh, and that seems to be a really common actually in the, um, as an occupational exposure. People who work in the cosmetic manufacturing plants, who work making the carmine itself, people who work in medicinal manufacturing, they can be exposed all the time to carmine and develop a uh, really bad sensitivity to it. It's called an immediate type hypersensitivity that can result in anaphylaxis. And anaphylaxis, if you're not familiar, is a life-threatening allergy. Uh, you know, when I warn you guys about contact dermatitis and rashes, that's not life threat. You know, that's very rarely life threatening. Uh, it's definitely not acutely life threatening. But in the case of anaphylaxis, when you come in contact with the allergen, it can be acutely life threatening. Your throat can swell up, and, and you know you can't breathe, and you, it's bad. You die uh, if you don't have treatment right away. So uh, it's it's really it's not without problems, likely due to the fact that it contains. Um, antigens from the bugs that people can be allergic to. Yeah, another industry where apparently there's a lot of carmine is in the sausage making industry. Uh, sausage making <laughs> apparently involves, I mean, it's not funny, I, I'm just laughing because I'm talking about making making sausages. Uh, they add that, they add carmine to make the sausage red and the, the handlers, the food handlers can develop, can develop this really bad allergy to it. Um, also in cosmetology and cosmetics, you're handling a lot of dyes and um, cosmetics that are dyed with carmine can also have issue with this. So as of 2009, actually the FDA requires both foods and cosmetics label if they have carmine in them. So for vegans, you know, who are seeking to avoid this or for people with allergy, you will at least be able to tell if your food or cosmetic contains that. However, I don't believe that alcohol is required to disclose that. So some alcohols that are dyed vibrantly red could contain carmine in them. Um, alcohol, you typically don't see ingredients listed. Um, for example, um, Campari used to be dyed with, uh, with carmine, but it no longer is. Um, so, you know, I would say avoid red alcohol. Uh, it could contain carmine if you are sensitive or if you're seeking to avoid it for, for you know, the vegan lifestyle. So that's what I can tell you guys about carmine. To be frank, I really never gave it that much consideration. I don't see cases of allergic contact dermatitis to carmine that commonly. Um, however, I'm preparing to make this video. I um, am you know, put off by the fact that it requires so many insects to make one kilogram of this dye, which let's face it, is an, essentially a useless ingredient, right? We don't need, we don't need cherry red food, cherry red um, medicinals, tablets. It's really just added to things to get us to buy them. And that's, 
that's kind of disturbing to me that we need so we need to kill so many insects to make this product that doesn't serve a function and really can only bring risk to people, namely life-threatening anaphylaxis being being the most striking. So, you know, really is alarming. Thank you guys for asking me to do this video because I really learned a lot. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.